Good morning. I'm Pastor Steve Woodfin from Our Shepherd Lutheran Church in Birmingham, Michigan. This is morning prayer for February the 3rd, 2021. And we're going to look today at, um, uh, well, uh, a command, uh, a word that's actually used that uh, sometimes makes us feel a little uncomfortable. That word is obligation. Uh, but I think when you see it in context in Romans chapter 15, uh, it actually becomes a glorious opportunity to serve others in this world. But let's begin first by God's grace alone. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. From Psalm 47. Clap your hands, all peoples. Shout to God with loud songs of joy. For the Lord the Most High is to be feared, a great king over all the earth. He subdued peoples under us and nations under our feet. He chose our heritage for us, the pride of Jacob, whom he loves. God has gone up with a shout, the Lord with the sound of a trumpet. Sing praises to God, sing praises, sing praises to our King, sing praises. For God is the King of all the earth, sing praises with a song. God reigns over the nations, God sits on his holy throne. The princes of the peoples gather as the people of the God of Abraham. For the shields of the earth belong to God. He is highly exalted. Beautiful. Now, Romans 15, verses 1 through 7, titled, uh, at least in the Lutheran Study Bible, titled with the words, The Example of Christ. There's the third use of the law again. We who are strong have an obligation, well, there it is, we have an obligation to bear with the failings of the weak and not to please ourselves. Let each of us please his neighbor for his good, to build him up. For Christ did not please himself, but as it is written, the reproaches of those who reproached, you fell on me. That's from Psalm 69, as a matter of fact. The, uh, it's the third most quoted psalm in the New Testament, a very messianic psalm. And I'll read that again. Uh, obviously in quotation marks, as Paul quotes it from, from Psalm 69, the reproaches of those who reproached you fell on me. For whatever was written in former days was written for our instruction, that through endurance and through the encouragement of the scriptures, we might have hope. May the God of endurance and encouragement grant you to live in such harmony with one another in accord with Christ Jesus, that together you may with one voice glorify the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, welcome one another as Christ has welcomed you, all for the glory of God. Isn't that a beautiful picture? You see what I mean when he, he starts off with the word obligation to bear with the feelings of the weak, but ultimately it comes down to the result. Welcome one another as Christ has welcomed you, and with one voice glorify God. Reminds me of the movie National Treasure. If you've seen it, I hope that uh, this is a spoiler alert if, in case you haven't seen it yet, but it's been around for a few years. Uh, but there's a, um, a scene where Ben Gates and his friend Riley Poole are reading the Declaration of Independence. And here's the line that Ben Gates says is at the heart of all the others. But when a long train of abuses and usurpations, pursuing invariably the same object, evinces a design to reduce them under absolute despotism, it is their right, it is their duty to throw off such government and provide new guards for their future security. Do you hear that word duty in addition, or in comparison to the word obligation we heard? And then Riley Poole says, I don't understand a word you said. And Ben Yates says, in summary, he says, it means if there's something wrong, those who have the ability to take action have the responsibility to take action. And I thought of that scene when I saw this this first verse that we read, um, verse 1 from Romans 15, we who are strong have an obligation to bear with the failings of the weak. Those who have the ability to take action have the responsibility to take the action. And so that's where we stand with those around us who need to be encouraged and strengthened in the faith. We have that obligation, but it is one that we take on with joy, knowing that God will work through us and through our ministerings and through the love that we share, through the, uh, the opportunities that we have again and again to show harmony and unity in the Spirit, to build them up and to bring them to a place where they have salvation and eternal life and that we truly will have 
absolute unity with them for eternity. So obligation, joyful duty that we all have together to create this glorious picture as Paul draws in accord with Christ Jesus, living in such harmony with one another, that together with one voice, we glorify God the Father through our Lord Jesus Christ. What a glorious picture that is. Well, let's pray about that, and we'll conclude with Luther's morning prayer as well. Lord God, Heavenly Father, we thank you for this new day, and we thank you, Lord, for the calling that you've given us by faith, by your Holy Spirit, to serve others, especially, Lord, as Paul writes today, uh, a duty and obligation to those who are weak, that, Lord, we can actually, by your power uh, and being used by you, bring them to a place out of their weakness and into the strength of faith that only you give through the gospel of Jesus Christ. So, Lord, we pray that you would use us mightily um, in order to do that. And, Lord, give us a, a taste, give us a glimpse of the, the glorious unity that, that Paul writes about today in Romans chapter 15, the unity of the Spirit that causes all of us to, to joyfully raise up praises to you, uh, all for the glory um, of, uh, of you and through, the, through the, the power of our Savior, our Lord Jesus Christ. May it be so, Lord, according to your good and gracious will. Amen. Well, let's close with Luther's morning prayer as well. I thank you, my Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have graciously kept me this night from all harm and danger. And I pray that you would keep me this day also from sin and every evil, that all my doings in life may please you. For into your hands I commend myself, my body and soul and all things. Let your holy angel be with me, that the evil foe may have no power over me. Amen. Well, the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you his peace now and forever. Amen. Have a great day in the Lord and look for opportunities to fulfill that glorious obligation of sharing the unity that we have together in Jesus Christ. Have a great day in the Lord. I'll see you tonight.